Hello and welcome to Newsroom. I am Tamilore Akenkole and those are the headlines to track and at the moment. Rasibola and Slimubu is currently in Ogun State for his first official state visit after being sworn in as president and being hosted at the palace of Ajuwale, the paramount ruler of Ijebu land, Obasikiri Adetono. He was accompanied by special advisor and special duties and communication and strategy, Deli Aleke, the national security advisor, Niu Ribadu, and his chief of staff, Femi Gwajabi Amila. President Tinobu also inspected guard of honor mounted for him by the military at the stadium after which he left to, for the private residence of the Awujali. The police force public relations officer Olumuyu Adejobi has said that the deployment of policemen to individuals will be reviewed and re regularized. This was contained in a statement on Wednesday via his Twitter account while reacting to a viral re video of an unidentified VIP seen being escorted on foot by no fewer than seven armed mobile policemen. The police PR statement was in response to a Twitter account with the name Oluyemi Fashikpe, who posted a video requesting to know who. A man, who the man in the video was and why he had so many policemen securing him. In his response, Adejobi condemned the act which he described as disgusting. He also promised to fish out the policemen in the video and bring them to book. A member of the House of Representatives Philip Agbese says the federal government must provide relief packages for Nigerians to cushion the biting effect of removal of subsidy on patrol. In a statement on Wednesday, Agbese said ending the subsidy regime is not enough and called for an investigation into how subsidy funds were expended in the last eight years. Last week, Tinubu said his administration is working on palliative cushions to cushion the effect of the subsidy removal on the masses. And in cover, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention's COVID data tracker has showed that an average of more than 6,000 people in the U.S. are still being hospitalized with COVID-19 every week. More than 1 million people have died in COVID-19 in the U.S. since the pandemic began, and hundreds of additional deaths continue to be traded on a weekly basis. Health Agency continues to report thousands of confirmed cases of COVID-19 every week in the U.S. and worldwide. The WHO recently declared the COVID-19 global health emergency over, but Lisa says that the disease remains a threat. And in business, Seplat Energy PLC has expressed continued interest in acquiring oil and gas assets from ExxonMobil Corporation, despite delays lasting over a year. Seplat CEO Roger Burns affirmed this commitment to completing the deal and hopes for a more favorable outcome under Nigerian's new president, Bola Ahmed Tunubu. The acquisition aims to boost Seplat's production capacity and increase its proven probable reserves with a focus on the ED values of natural gas and the assets. And on the global scene, over four people have died in South Africa after a southeastern province of the country was hit by heavy rain and a tornado, the authorities said on Thursday. Powerful winds and rainfall damaged roads and flooded houses and sewer systems, followed by a tornado that struck north of the port city of Durban on Thursday. Regrettably, so far, four people have been confirmed to have lost their life, the province disaster management department said in a statement. And in sports, talks are expected to take place this week to try and resolve the impasse over Messi months over Messi months potential move to Manchester United. United submitted what was said to be their final offer to Chelsea last week, and the Blues responded to the 55 million euros bid by demanding 58 million, with an additional 7 million euros in in add-ons. However, United feels this is too much for a player in the final year of contract, giving Chelsea paid £15 million for Ryan Sterling last season. And that's it on news now at the moment. Thank you for joining us. I am Tamilora Akinkulia. Bye for now.